that in it, I want you all to just rise up. Let us welcome Jehovah God Almighty, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Yahweh Sabaoth, the great I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega. Let us be holy in His presence because He is holy. I want us all to start to lift up our voice to welcome the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Begin to serenade Him with your worship, your praise, your thanksgiving. Lift up your voice and praise Him. Worship Him, adore Him. Father, we worship You this morning. We bless Your holy name. We give You all the glory, honor, and adoration. Father, we thank You for all that You've done for us today. We thank You for the miracle of waking up. We thank You for the miracle of going to bed at night and waking up this morning. We thank you for life itself today. Father, we are thanking you for the privilege of life. We do not take it for granted. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you've done for us this week. Lift up your voice and thank him for Johnny Massey's for coming here. You have your health. You have your well-being. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. Begin to worship Him, begin to adore Him, begin to thank Him. Father, we lift up our grateful hearts. You took us throughout this week. You provided for us, you protected us, you covered us. Regardless of what happened, you're here today, you're standing, you have breath. Father, we thank you for the privilege of this brand new day in creation that we have seen. We do not take it for granted. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Worship and adore him. Bless his holy name. He is the King of kings, the creator of the universe. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, take control. Every single location this morning, all our viewers online, we ask that you visit them. You give them the peace that passes all understanding. We ask that every location today will give you all the glory, honor, and adoration for all those who are connecting to us online, all those who are in the five locations. We bless you for their lives. Father, Lord, we just want to pray that our faith will be greatly increased in this service today, that anyone having a crisis of faith, their faith will be renewed, your faith will be rejuvenated, you will come away from this place today with a fresh anointing to have faith in God, in whom we have, in whom we have our living, in whom we move. Father, we glorify you, we honor you, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Father, we just pray that today, as Pastor Shola preaches, the word itself in season, it will inhabit our hearts, it will produce fruit in our lives, and not every single one of us, everybody connected to the Liberty Church Global, their lives will not be the same again because of your word. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Put your hands together and welcome the sounds of liberty. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for Jesus. Come on, make a resounding clap for him. Do you know who he is? If you do, come on, begin to worship him right now. Begin to praise him. He deserves your worship. He deserves your adoration. Thank you, Father. You reign. You reign over our lives. You reign over all the affairs of man. Thank you, Jesus.
the God if the exceedingly, the abundantly, more than we can ever think or imagine. That is the type of God you are. A great God, there is nothing impossible for you to do. You cannot lie, what you say is what you do. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down Faithful through change
to give God that worship right now, either in a praise, in a hallelujah, in a hand clap, you just want to raise that praise to God, that Lord, I praise you, Lord, I worship you, you are worthy of all the praise, you are worthy of all the honor, if we have a thousand tongues, they are not enough to praise him, so Father, we raise our hands to you this morning, this afternoon, to say we thank you, to say we worship you, to say we exalt you. Receive our worship, receive our praises. All the glory be unto you, all the honor be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshiped. Amen, amen. Can you give a louder, 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 louder round of applause? Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much. God bless you for leading us in that awesome time of worship. Amen. You can have your seat before God this afternoon. Are you happy to be in God's presence today? Yes? Do you want to ask your neighbor? You know about yourself, but ask your neighbor. Neighbor, are you happy to be in God's presence this afternoon? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Uh, my job here is very simple. I'm here to introduce our testimonies. Testimonies at the Liberty Church are proof positive of what God does in our midst. And Sunday in, Sunday out, we always have at least a minimum of one testimony to share. We usually have more, but because of time, we share just one. Now, this is our season of faith. You can see that QR code on your screen right now. I want you to take a picture of that QR code in faith that very soon you will be entering your own testimony into that form in the name of Jesus. So that form lets us um, enter or send through our testimonies uh, to show that God is indeed in our midst. And when you show what God has done in your life, it helps the next person to you to believe that indeed God is in this house and he is in the work of doing miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. So the next point I want to make this afternoon is that our YouTube channel is live right now. So if you have a smartphone, who does not have a smartphone? Okay, nobody, all right? So I can count everybody here. If I go to YouTube when I sit down and I don't see the numbers, I'm going to start knocking on your seats one by one. Have you liked the YouTube stream? So go to our YouTube channel right now, like this stream, and God will bless you. It helps us uh, to show more people what we're doing at the Liberty Church Global. Hallelujah. Uh, the next point is every tribe member in this place um, you have a service for you immediately after the testimony you can just make your way 
um, towards this direction to your own service. Um, if you're a teenager and you're sitting anywhere um, in the congregation, please just join them immediately after the testimony. Amen. We also have the sermon notes. Uh, if you want to follow the service as pastor is preaching, uh, there is a QR code that will come up right now. Uh, just scan it and download uh, the message and you can follow as pastor preaches. Amen. So immediately after the video of the testimonies, I believe we have two testimonies. After it's done, Pastor Shola Falalade, the man that God has sent to this house as the visionary pastor would come up uh, to deliver another message in season. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the presence of God today. God bless you. Hello, church. Here's my testimony. I have been seeking a promotion at work and noticed there were some openings for the next level. However, my line manager informed me that I still had to develop some competences before applying for the role. I trustingly believed her and did not apply, not knowing she had consented that three other assistant managers on the same level with me should apply. I was so discouraged and started looking for alternative external opportunities. It was so bad that I missed a very important interview due to my mind not being settled at that time. I then remembered it was Easter season and attended the atmosphere of worship and wonders on Good Friday. It was like the service that day was fashioned for me by the Holy Ghost, who healed my heart of every hurt and helped me to forgive my line manager. At the program, it was also prophesied through songs that God's hands were upon our lives. He makes us soar and run. I sang this song with the whole of my heart as God reminded me this was the song I played on repeat throughout my final year exams at university and God used it to lift my spirit and build up my faith again. It was also prophesied that God would do something for us in the next 17 days and I believed and said a big amen in the next 17 days, somebody in this place is going to experience a turnaround. At our team meeting Friday after, our team senior manager presented me and a colleague with an award, which was recommended by a senior manager in the business whom we had supported on a project. He stated that if we did not support the project, it would have failed. He also called me to thank me specially. I give thanks to Almighty God for putting his mighty hand on my work and causing me to be honored this way. I believe it is the beginning of many more beautiful things to come in Jesus' name. Hello, church. I'm here to testify about the goodness of the Lord for myself and my family. I want to thank God for his protection, for going ahead of my family and for his faithfulness to his word. Throughout the month of power, there were many strange dreams and encounters that happened in my family. I acted on what we learned in church and decided to keep the fire on my altar burning even more. God reassured me that I and my family have a wonderful future with a happy ending, Psalm 37 and verse 37, and that as I look to him, me and my family will be radiant with joy and will never be put to shame, Psalm 34 and 5. I was led to take communion daily until God told me to stop. At Atmosphere of Worship and Wonders 13, Pastor Shola walked by and told me he needed to pray against sickness in my family. At that time, nobody was sick. 
but I agreed in faith that all will be well. <laughs> a week or two later, my dad came back from his travels and immediately became unwell. The ambulance took him to hospital and when we arrived, we were told he was septic and we came in the nick of time. He spent several days in hospital, but has recovered well and we thank God as he is back home. I'm grateful to God for his prophetic word and for reassuring and preparing me ahead of what occurred. The enemy has been put to shame, hallelujah, and indeed my family and I are radiant with joy. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. The enemy will be put to shame in your family. The enemy will be put to shame in your life. The enemy will be put to shame in your circumstances. Hallelujah. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I was going to say welcome back. I'm the one that's, that went somewhere, innit? <laughs> Bring you greetings from Houston, Texas. Say amen. Amazing things happened in Houston. You know, when we have the time, we'll talk about it. But phenomenal things. Hallelujah. Thank God for uh, the great things he's doing through the Liberty Church across the world. And I believe very strongly somebody here is going to be the next person to have the next big testimony. Amen. Well, um, uh, hello, Croydon. How are you guys doing? Hi, Canary Wharf. Hello, St. John's Wood. And hello, One Love People. Now, those are the people online. Those are the people who are, uh, you know, various parts of the world. Some of them, you know, are in London, you know, and they'll be back. They'll be back here soon. And we're, so we, we love you as you watch us online. And we're praying that anytime you have a chance, please make sure we get to see you physically. Amen. All right. So I believe strongly that this month is going to be somebody's month of celebrating good news. If you're that person, shout it loud, hallelujah. hallelujah. Two powerful testimonies, you know, seem simple, but, you know, the interesting thing is that they come from the uh, atmosphere of worship, both of them. The first one was a prophetic word that came through a song. You know, every now and again, God gives a prophetic song. That one just happened to be in another tongue. Okay, but essentially the translation of, of the song is, uh, the hand of the Lord is upon my life. He lifts me up. He makes me go faster, something to that effect. And as a result of that, the, the person kept singing this song, kept singing this, and then they saw the result or the effect in their life. Somebody here will, will ride on a prophetic song. And they will see the impact and the results in this year of extraordinary results. The other person, you know, uh, when we have our, our supernatural services, I feel led sometimes by the Spirit of God to just go around, lay hands on people and all of that. And I laid hands on this person. And, you know, God told me to pray against sickness. And the person said, there's nothing like that going on in their family. And I just prayed because I heard it. How many of you know that God sees what is about to happen? And uh, her, her dad came back home septic. By the time an ambulance is coming to pick your dad up, you know he's ill. Now, septic means infection in the blood. Uh, and essentially, um, that could, it, it's called septicemia. It's not a very good thing to have. You can have what you call organ failure as a result of that. But thank God, it was picked up in the spirit and addressed. I decree and declare that nobody here will go before their time. Amen. I decree that whatever the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for good. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We have some serious business to do today. I, I think the, this, we preached this message in the first service. I think it's going to be a bit different in this second service. I'm praying that it will have some more vavavum. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready? Look at your neighbor. See, you're looking better than I thought you would this morning. Can you please find something nice to say? Some people, when you, you say look at your neighbor, they just do like... Mm. <laughs> the idea is to interact. Be, be a friendly neighbor. Look at them, please. Some people are still looking straight. Please look at your neighbor and say, 
You are looking good today. Okay, just say something nice. Say, God bless you. The Bible says to love your neighbor. I think we should start with the ones in church. All right. Hebrews 11, 33 to 40 says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms? This is uh, 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 the retinue or, or uh, um, as it were, an articulation of the, the resume of people who walked in faith. And it demonstrates the different ways they walked in faith. Who through faith, these people subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire. Somebody is about to stop the bailiffs taking their possession. Somebody is about to stop their house being repossessed. Somebody is about to stop their children being sent out of school. Stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong. They became valiant in battle. Somebody is about to win every battle they face. They turn to flight the armies of the aliens, every demonic assault and alien against your, your, uh, against your life. You are going to turn them to flight. A thousand will, 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 will stand, come by your left hand, but it will not come near you. They will, they will come in one direction, they will flee in seven other directions. Then verse 35 says, women receive their dead raised to life again. It seems like women have more faith than men do. Oh, Karabadis. I said, the women will receive their dead back to life again. You will receive dead marriages back to life. You will receive uh, uh, children who are, who are uh, tyrants or whatever, uh, you know, will back, to, back to life, back to functionality out of dysfunction. Rebellious children back and they shall serve God with zeal. That amen is too weak. And it says, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings and of the chains of imprisonment. I decree and declare that your faith will speak for you. Matthew uh, 14, very quickly, verse 28 and 32. And it says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down on the, on the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Look at somebody next to you. Say, I'm going to walk on water this year. And then he says, Come, and when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to the Jesus, verse 30. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, be careful what you look at. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31 says, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And then he says, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. I want you to take note that as soon as he stepped back into the boat, the problem stopped. Then for, because you guys have been great and have been away for a week at least, I'll give you an extra scripture. Uh, I usually give two, I'm going to give three. First Peter chapter 4 verse 12 to 16. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Look at your neighbor. Say, whatever you're going through, you don't think it is strange. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but don't think it is strange. Somebody else has been through it and come out and survived. You will survive. But rejoice to the extent that you, you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Uh, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, which means he is reproached. But on your part, he is what? Glorified. God will be glorified through you. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Do not suffer as a thief, and I add, as a fraudster as an evildoer or as a busybody. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, don't be a busybody. 
And then, just in case you think it's a mistake, it says, a busybody in other people's matters. Which means there were gossips even from those days. Verse 16. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. May the Lord bless the reading, but more so the doing of his word. Father, Lord, we pray by your spirit that you open up our hearts, open up our spirits, open up our destinies as the word comes forth. Let the word of God bring light into the dark areas of our life and infuse faith, faith like never before. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. The title of my message is simply called, and I want you to tell your neighbor, say, don't let the enemy steal your faith. Please, don't say it like a title. Tell, say it like you are really encouraging. That Say, don't let the enemy steal your faith. Hallelujah. This month is our month of faith, and uh, two weeks ago, I opened up the month by talking about faith, and I spoke about the fact that God wants to do great things through us, and that without faith, it is impossible to do what? Please God. In fact, you know, the Bible actually puts it this way, that faith, what we call Christianity, or some other people will call your, our religion, is actually called the faith. If you look at scripture, in about four different places, about one or two in the, in, the, in the Old Testament and about two or three in the New Testament, it says the just shall live by what? Not just faith, by his faith, which essentially means that if you are just, listen to this, that you will need to live by faith. It's like saying human beings will live by oxygen. In fact, I did mention a few weeks ago that faith is a currency. The same way you and I spend pounds sterling. And I believe somebody here is going to be rich in a lot of pounds sterling. Yeah. Somebody in dollars. Yeah. Somebody in Japanese yen. Yeah. Dutch max, German Dutch max. Now, listen to this. I see how you're excited and you're claiming all of that. But listen to this. Somebody here is going to be rich in faith. Because there are some things that pound sterling cannot buy. And they, but the currency, the legal tender, which is taken in England, is what? Pound sterling. The other day, you know, I, I, I got, um, you know, I just come back from um, one country, a particular country. And when I arrived, you know, I wanted to buy stuff. I just put my hand in my back pocket and brought it out. And the guy looked at me like, I brought out Naira. Like, are you okay? What he was essentially saying is that, well, that is money, but that's not money here. Yeah, and so you don't get what you are trying to get. He held what it is I wanted to buy until you give me the legal tender. Now, in the same way, you can't give God pounds and use it to buy your healing. Does that make sense? So, but there is, the, the, the currency that is spent or used in the supernatural realm is a currency of faith. Somebody say faith. faith. This is how we put it. It says in Hebrews 11, 33 to 40, who through faith, somebody say through faith, faith. subdued kingdoms. It's almost like saying through about 500,000 pounds, somebody bought a house. Or through 30,000 pounds, they bought a car. So this, guy, this, this scripture is saying, through faith, somebody subdued kingdoms. Um, what righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, that through faith as well, they stopped drugs from ravaging their child. Through faith, they, they stopped their husband from being taken by a strange woman. Mm. Somebody wanted to say amen, but they didn't want to say it loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> they quench the violence of fire of being sacked from their job. Or when they were sacked, they, they stopped the violence of fire of the fire consuming them in unemployment. They escaped the edge of the sword of immigration. And out of the weakness, they were made strong and so on and so forth. Let me say this. Essentially, a summary of this is if we will fulfill the destiny of God that God has, has for us, we must accept that we will face many battles that will contend for our faith. 
What am I trying to say? Uh, look at your neighbor. Say, he's talking about you. Listen to this. I don't, is, is anybody here, let me put it this way. Has anybody here, is anybody here going through any battle at all? Put up your hand, if at all you're putting. God bless you, let's see. If you're not going through any battle, let me pray for you. Okay. Has anybody gone through any difficult battle before? Put up your hand. Okay, don't be fooled. If anybody tells you that when you become a Christian, you will not face any battle, it's a fake kind of Christianity. The proof of Christianity. Have you ever seen, you know, when I was a kid, I don't know about this country, yeah? Um, when you see a tree, there's a tree called, we used to call it fruit. <laughs> Almonds. <laughs> okay, let's say mangoes. Mangoes is mango anywhere. It is only when you see a ripe mango tree that you see boys around it throwing sticks at it. Who knows what I'm talking about? They don't throw sticks here, I know. You know, but we are hungry where I came from. And, and when we see ripe, orange, you know, orange or reddish or whatever, you just see guys throwing sticks at it. Any tree that does not have ripe fruit, no sticks. Small wonder sticks and stones have been thrown at you. You are ripe for something. Kayabata Sakada. You are, there is something valuable. Nobody breaks into a, a, a bust bank, a broke bank. If, if they've been breaking, trying to break into your life, you feel you're under sick, it's because your life is valuable. Yeah. Look at your neighbor, says he's talking to me. And this is why Paul says in 2 Timothy verse 4 to 7, this is when he got to the end of, towards the end of his life, I have fought the good fight. Ask your neighbor, what have you fought? If you are not fighting anything, the likelihood is, is either you are not ripe or you are going in the devil's direction. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have what? Finished the race. I have what? Kept the faith. Which means there's a fight to fight. Yeah. There's a race to run and there's a faith to keep. Do you know if you are not aware, you can run the race, finish, and you find that you left your faith behind. Which means there is a faith to what? Keep. What do I mean by that? So when we talk about the faith, the faith is, the, is your religion, but within the religion, hello, there is a faith to keep. The faith, like I said, essentially is like your currency. Maybe another way to put it is you are traveling, yeah? On the, you know, I travel a lot, so whether to the US or whatever, you know, each time I always have to keep checking. I do this. Do you know why? Do you know why I do that? Because there are sometimes maybe I go off to buy a drink or buy, um, you know, something or the other, and I left my passport, it's happened before, and my boarding pass or my boarding pass. And if you do this, listen to this, you'll be, <laughs> your journey has ended from there. <laughs> your, your journey has ended. So the same way, listen to this, in your journey, in your Christian life, you have to keep doing this. Check if your faith is still there. You have to keep checking. Do this. Somebody please do this. Yeah, yeah. Check your heart. Is, do, is, do you still have faith? Yeah. And the point is this. They, so because the enemy knows you cannot go on this journey, get to your destination without your faith. You know what his target is? His aim is to steal your faith. Oh, no, no, no. You, you think if the enemy steals your house, you will get it back if you have faith. If the enemy steals your money, you will get it back because of your faith. But if he steals your faith, you may not make it to, even to heaven. Hello? Listen to this. The fight of faith is a fight between your conviction and your present condition. Faith is the substance of things what? Hope for, and it is what? The evidence of things not seen. What am I trying to say? There is something... You know, faith is what you carry before the manifestation of what you are believing God for. And, and faith is that thing. It's like I said the other day. It's like a check, a promise that we give. We are going to get 20 million pounds. Somebody received that. Yeah. God says you're going to get 20 million pounds. But you, you know what? Your rent is a thousand pounds and you can't pay it. And they are, they are, they are telling you, you have, to, you have to leave this place. 
Unless, and this, you know, that you are even squatting with somebody. And we are telling you, you have to leave this place. And so your present condition is saying you don't have even 1,000 pounds to pay for this rent. But you have, you have a check of somebody who is able and he has integrity and also has ability. So what do you do? You say to them, he said, don't worry, I will pay it. Say, don't worry, you'll pay it. In fact, you will say to them, this is what I will say, say, I will pay it and I will buy you a house. Ah, they'll be looking at you. <laughs> you can't even pay the rent. You say, I say, I will pay it. And you know that that money is going to clear soon. Somebody say, have you got faith? So, the, so when you know, you have a confidence in the person that is going to give you the 20 million pounds, but you have a conviction, but your condition is insulting you. Oh, lift up your right hand wherever. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that my convictions will soon answer my condition in the mighty name of Jesus. And it will change my situation. And this is why I want to encourage you to avoid faith failure. Let me explain what I mean. Satan's plan against your life, to be honest with you, is that if he can steal your faith, he's destroyed your life. So this is why Jesus warned Simon Peter in Luke 22, verse 31 to 33. He says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you. <laughs> if I were Simon Peter, I would answer the Lord. I said, Lord. Please tell him I'm not in. Why are, you, why are you telling me? He said, Satan has asked for you or, or answer him for me. Why are you telling me? You are my Lord now. He said, Satan has asked for you that he may what? Sift you as wheat. Now, I want you to take note. The person he's speaking to here, his name is called Simon Peter. But he didn't say to him, Peter, Peter. Remember, Peter is the name the Lord gave him. The word Simon means shaky and unstable. The word Peter means solid as a rock. So Jesus was essentially speaking to his weaker side. Uh, let me explain what I mean. So um, I've not always been a pastor. Neither have I always been a Christian. And when I was an unbeliever, please be careful. Don't, don't use this after, you know, this, you know. I'm just using this as an example, so don't call me this after. So my friends in the world, they used to call me tight cat. <laughs> and, and so can you imagine God trying to speak to me now? Now, I've been a believer for 32, I mean, well, 34 years or so. Can you imagine the Lord trying to speak to me? Say, and he calls me, say, tight cat, tight cat. Satan has asked for you. I said, Lord, I'm not tight cat. He said, Satan has been asking for the tight cut in you. <sighs> Say, Lord, I'm a man of God. <laughs> but Lord, don't, don't you know I'm apostolic? He said, my guy, the side he's been asking for you is your weak side. And the reason why he's asking is, is that he wants to disprove me. That you are not who we said we so, I want you to be aware that you have a weakness. Uh, look at your neighbor. Say, I think he's talking about you. It, it, on, in, on this note, I think he's talking about you. Then he says in verse 32, are you here? But I have prayed for you that your faith should not what? Fail you. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. I want you to take note of this. I find it really interesting that the conversation the Lord is having with Peter is that, look, Satan has asked for you, I would have thought what I'm taught in Christianity will be that. Satan has asked for you, Peter, don't worry, I'm taking care of it. He will not even move near you. He's saying here essentially, Satan has asked for you and I have allowed him. And my prayer for you is that when he's finished with you, <laughs> you will still be standing. You will still have your ticket. You will still have your currency and you will not have thrown it away. Hello? Essentially. And you will still have it and you will not have gone back to being tight cut. What am I trying to say to you? I'm saying to you that, listen to this, you know, 
your faith will be tested. God does not approve of you until he has first proven you. And, and what that essentially means is that your faith will go through a processing. You know, it's called a test of faith. And so that, that you know, begs the question that, is your faith real? Look at your neighbor, ask them, say, is your faith real? <laughs> oh, God, that's a big question, though. Because let me tell you this. We will have faith when everything is going good. <laughs> the question is that uh, <laughs> when the heat is up, will your faith still stand the test? I remember, you know, uh, I, I, I used to publish a magazine. Um, I did it for about, was it about 15 years or so, thereabout. But when I first started, you know, I came out gung-ho, you know, yeah, we're going to take the world. And then the magazine, in fact, at least the way we used to talk about it, it's an international, contemporary, international, glossy, lifestyle, international lifestyle magazine. And it was. It was. It was. But you know what? Now we, they feel the... You know what I mean? I was the engine room of the magazine. I was the everything of the magazine. And I remember... So that's why somebody, my, my uncle used to say, na big name, they kill small dog. What that essentially means is that, look, <laughs> if you call yourself a Doberman pincher, it will pinch you somewhere. That, that it's better to just manage yourself like you're a small man. When you carry a big name, then there's big expectation. And so essentially, I remember, you know, being in the car with my me mentor at the time, he's now late, Dr. Miles Morrow, and I said, sir, we have just published the third magazine, and it is difficult. The thing is not selling like I thought it would, and I'm the one carrying all the weight. My, finance, my savings is almost finished. He laughed. He said, God is testing you by your own product. He said, you said God said. God wants to know if you believe it or not. And he says, you will first be spent is, is this making sense? Uh, now, and so essentially what he was saying is that God is trying to test if, if the, you, you know, the faith you have in this thing is real or not, and you'll be the first one to believe it by how much of, it you, how much of your income and everything you've, before anybody else believes in it. And it's the same way, way with investments. The founder has to spend his own money first. I remember when I talk about your faith will be tested, you know, you will not know how genuine your faith is until you go through certain things. I remember a, a particular gentleman, he was actually, he rose up to be a leader in our church, you know, and he knew a lot of scriptures and all of that. And I remember all of a sudden, things went dry for him. No job, no this. I even remember one time, he traveled to China, bought one product, asked me to pray over the product. He was going to take the thing somewhere to sell it, blah, blah. He came back, out of 20 or so products, he didn't even, he sold one. And it was his in-law that bought it out of encouragement, that one product. And then he came back, he said he has sent um, what the applications to various places and no, and then he just came back. He, 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 he said, what kind of God is this? You, you, he can't even get you a job. And from that moment, you know what? I noticed that he started to backslide. Why? Because in his own mind, yeah, God was a God of jobs. God was a God of provision. And if God cannot even get you a job, then he's not what a God worth following. So his faith failed him. What am I trying to say to you? Essentially, you know, you will get to a point where your, your, your faith will be tested and you, you know, you, you can dance in church all you like. I serve a very big, and do like this, and do like this, and do like this, and do like this, and do like this. <laughs> I have a very big God. But when they test you in the area, you are 42 and you're not married yet. <laughs> then Simon, Simon, we start, they will start calling you Simon, Simon, or maybe Sally, Sally. Is this, is this making sense? 
Listen to this. Your faith will be tested in the area of your weakest point. Say, you can't even have God even give somebody a husband, ordinary husband. And so this is why, <laughs> this is why I said, I have prayed that your faith will not what? Fail you. Simon Peter actually went back fishing, which means he backslid. May you not backslide in Jesus' name. You see, your faith will be tested whether it is real or fake. You know, I was telling the earlier service that this is the way the scripture puts it. I'll show you in a short while. You know, it says, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, if you, if you look at this illustration, there's no illustration that Jesus gives that is just pulled out of the air. You see, wheat at the time could be used as currency. Does that make sense? So the, you want to buy uh, uh, um, you know, a cow, you can pay with wheat. But wheat's with value was higher when it was processed. Let me explain what I mean. Um, who knows the difference between granite and peanut? <laughs> Somebody says it's packaging. <laughs> That granite is, they put it inside bottle. <laughs> Peanut is inside. <laughs> now, if you come in contact with granite, mm, I, I don't think, I haven't seen granite here. Granite as, is, as it, is, it is, it will usually come like brown, you know what I mean? Yeah, and when you buy it from the source, there will be, when I was growing up, a lady sat there and said, how much do you want? She'll put it, she'll do like. There's a flavor that that adds to. They don't have that one in Tesco, Tesco peanuts. You know what I mean? They do that. So you see. You bought, you, 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 when you bought it, you bought it with its husk. Okay? So the same way wheat was sold in its, in its raw state like that with what you call chaff. And so when, when, when Jesus was talking to him, he said, Satan has asked for you. Why? Because you're in your raw state. And I have allowed Satan to sift you as wheat because I need you more valuable. Ah, are you hearing what I'm saying? The issue is that you think you are all that and, you know, a bag of chips like the Americans will say. So you think you are the man of God. But there's still tight cuts somewhere inside you. So Satan needs to separate the what? Wheat from the chaff. And, and that, that, that shaking eh, is, will remove the blowable things. Some of you, you still have blowable things on you. You still have some pride. You still, you still have some, some things that you are still trying to show off. <laughs> and this is and another illustration, you know, that is used in Scripture. This same Peter, after he had gone through what he went through, he spoke about the processing of gold. He, say, he says... He said, essentially, he says in 1 Peter 1, 6 to 7, he says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your what? Faith being much more what? Precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. Listen to this. He uses another example here that our faith is like what? Gold. Then he uses a very important word. He says, the genuineness of what? Your faith. Well, if he talks about genuine faith, that means there is faith that is not genuine. Listen to this. Anybody that is going around and say, I have faith. Look at them and just be saying, is this one genuine faith or fake faith? And the only way <laughs> that they will know whether your faith is fake or genuine is that the test will come. That's the leveler. So when I was in uni, uh, no, please don't, don't look at me with a bad eye. I was a bad boy. I said I was. I no longer am. The Lord has helped me and is still helping me. Okay. So 
<laughs> I remember telling one story the, the, the other, yes, I, I, in fact, I won't even go there. I remember I said, I said something in one fellowship, this was many years ago, uh, and at the end of the fellowship, this woman came up to me, she was like, my mother's friend, my dad's friend. Hey, you mean you did all those things? <laughs> you know, he was like, you did all those things? I did your father know? I said, ma, the Lord has forgiven me, ma. <laughs> my dad too read in my book. This is years after I read in my book. He read one of my books and then saw that I said I smoke cannabis. The next time he came to me, he said, you smoke cannabis? All those? I said, dad, that is 10 years ago. Are you trying to beat me now for something like me 10 years ago? <laughs> I'm a married man now. You say, after all I taught you, you did that. I said, that I am forgiven and redeemed by the blood. So let me tell you one of those things. So when, when I was an unbeliever at uni, I used to be a, a part of, a member of a club. And if you know university clubs, we like to do like we have something when we don't have anything. Long story short, anyhow. Um, so we had what we call club dues. Okay, and it, used to, it was a lot of money. In fact, many times it would be half, like half of your um, um, allowance, your school, your, you know. And so there was a way we found a way around it. So my friend, you know, said, don't worry. They will sort myself and him out. How was he going to sort? He was going to take his mother's gold. <laughs> gold necklace, yeah. And so I was like, hey, not a bad idea. So... And then we go and pawn it. Now, there's a place we go to a particular hotel, and there's some malams and, co you know, anyway, long story short, when they, when they receive the gold, they'll take it, and before we go, we will test it by scratching it to make sure it's not cheap trinket, costume jewelry, some, you know, where I come from, they call it panda. <laughs> you know, so it, essentially that it is not painted with gold. But you see, those guys don't, they don't, that's not their whatever. They will take a, a, a liquid, I don't know, it's like some acid or something, and put it on it. Then they'll say, oh, yeah. Then they'll give you, you know, give you the money and you go. So we did it about three times. And, you know, the next one, my, my friend now said, shall I you bring your gold? I said, we don't have gold in our house. And it's true, we didn't have. Because I said, what do you mean you don't have gold? I said, I don't have a mother. Nobody wears gold in the house. He said, ah, so I'm the thief, eh? I said, you are not the thief, but, you know, <laughs> where am I going to get gold from? My dad didn't wear gold. He didn't like gold. And, and then he said, ah, okay, you're on your own now. So I then said, okay, for solidarity with my friend, I'm not a thief. But let me just remember, my dad had a gold watch that had been given to him. Remember, he doesn't wear it. So I thought of relieving, relieving him of it. <laughs> And I remember the gold was placed, some, I mean, the watch was just placed somewhere. So I took the watch, and it was solid. We tested it. But when we took it to this place, I noticed all the malams, all the, they all gathered around because it was serious. And then everybody gathered, and they brought out the, the, the and they just started, come and see the, their eyes. At that moment, that's when I thought to myself, my life can be at risk here. <laughs> because everybody saw the value, and it was heavy gold. So I, I held my friend, and, you know, they counted the money. Oh, God. <laughs> if in the past, my friend would give us, would take his mom's necklace there, maybe they would give us 300 naira, which would have been about 300 pounds. This one, I don't want to tell you the amount. Let me just say, that the name of the watch was called Itana. When we received the money, my friend and I, as we were spending the money, we called it Eternal Jalof <laughs> because the money did not end. Now, the point I'm trying to make in all of this is that, listen to this, <laughs> the gold had to be tested. Sadly, a lot of us think we have faith. But when it is put under the test, it is really copper. 
Look at your neighbor. Say, don't let the enemy steal your faith. And the, the test of it, what proves it is your reaction in the fire. What kind of God is this? All, all this, you can't even, you know. The Bible says, beloved, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial that you are going through, which is to try you, which is to test you as though something strange has happened to you. Opposition will come to try to shift your divinely proclaimed position. What am I trying to say to you? You see, if you truly have faith, faith is an internal conviction that helps you navigate challenges with calmness, confidence, and competence. I'll give you some real examples. I remember my son, when he was diagnosed as having Kawasaki, long story short, I came back one day from when I traveled, and I was looking for my family, nobody at home. I, come, imagine coming from a trip, nobody at home. I, I called, called, nobody knew where they are until I called uh, somebody. And then they said they were in, at A and E. My wife, my child, my son was bleeding from various orifices. And when I asked, I'm a medical doctor, I asked, what's happening here? They said he has Kawasaki's disease. I said, what is that? He said, well, it's a disease that was invented by a Japanese person or discovered, and it only happens in 1% of the population. And he said, I said, so what I, what's the prognosis? His temperature was going up 40 and all of that. It was, you know, I said, what's the prognosis? They said, well, um, one third of the, of, the, of the patients die. I said, God forbid. Another third, yeah, will have a permanent health, heart condition. The last third will do what? He said, they'll be okay. And his temperature kept going up, and we had a service on Sunday, and I was standing with him and his mom. And his mom said, look, go to church. There's nothing you can do here. Your staying here will not mean anything. Listen to this. I went to church, and I did not announce to the church that they should start praying. I didn't say, hey, everybody, my son, my last born, his temperature is gone. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. You know what? I preached this message. And it was Thanksgiving. I danced Thanksgiving. Why? Because my conviction was stronger than the condition. Is this making sense? My conviction, listen to this, was stronger than, in fact, in the midst, so I had a quiet calmness and confidence with competence that this God that I serve will not fail me. Uh, the long story short is that that same boy is the boy that is bouncing around today, wearing jackets, doing music, blah, blah, blah. That goes to show that he's remained in the one third. Your faith will not fail you. Uh, that, did we go through the... Eh? We went through the test too. After he... We still went to Great Ormond Street... Every month, I don't know, for something like six months to keep checking his heart. And I wondered, God, why do you pass through people, people through this thing when you know the end? It's to test your faith. <laughs> the genuineness of it. Because, you know, you will say that you have, have faith, but God knows that you don't. Or, or he knows the kind of faith that you have. And listen to this. I want to use this as an encouragement for somebody. Listen to this. Faith is sometimes should be seen like seed in the ground. When you plant a seed, when God gives you a word concerning your family, concerning your business, concerning your child, listen, he says, this child will be great, or this will happen. Listen to this. When you take a seed and you plant it in the ground, what happens? What does it do? It actually dies. It actually, first of all, it is buried. So, you know what we do with our, when our faith is, is not strong, we keep going back to check it, and then we, we dig it up, and we take it somewhere, and we say, this, this church is not good, let me go somewhere else. And then we put it somewhere else, say, this man of God doesn't have anointing, we remove it, and we take it somewhere else. Tell your neighbor, say, let your, let your seed die. Let your die. You know what? This is where that song goes, when he says, even when we don't see it, he's working. Uh, how does it go again? He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops. 
Mm, I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. It never stops, it never stops working. What stops? You never stops working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Listen to that song, you need to sing. Let me tell you, people don't know that songs are giving us as faith boosters. That when they just turn you down, when they just tell you, look, we are repossessing your house, you should go, even when I don't see it is working, even when... Feel it is working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. Listen to this. <laughs> Real faith will be tested. Faith is not worth anything until it is tested. So, what are the different kinds of, of, of tests that will come to your faith? The first is what we call contrary winds. Oh, are you ready? Somebody say contrary winds. <laughs> Listen to this. The, the Bible says in Matthew 14, 24, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. Who made the disciples get into the boat? Was it the disciples that decided? Somebody tell me, please. I want you to read that very... It says, Jesus did what? Made his disciples get into the marriage, made his disciples get into the, into the ministry, made his disciples start that business. The first question you want to ask when you are going through a problem is, was it God that made me do this? First question. That's the first question. Once you have that settled, the rest is now a different matter. He says, and he made them go before him to the other side. Was it God that tell you, told you to start this marriage? If it was God, then we can now talk. Was it God that asked you, told you to have this child? Okay? Now that the child is now errant and is now, you know, dis dysfunctional as it were. Uh, but then the rest is history. Then, then it says, now when evening came. Listen to this. Every faith journey will face its evening time. And, and what happens in the evening? It says, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Oh, God, about this. Let me say something to you. If you are really working with God, anything God told you to do, eh, in the middle. Somebody say in the middle. Have you noticed that the beginning of the year is always a happy new year? I don't know anybody that says happy mid-year. <laughs> when you ask people in the middle of the year, say, ah, man, this year, it is getting as it is being. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? I, 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 have you not seen that, how people dance in the, in, in the, uh, the marriage, at the wedding ceremony? How they do the different dances, they practice. Uh, see them six months, six months in the middle. <laughs> Tell them to dance, they'll do. Ch -ch -ch. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, why? Because in the middle, certain things that we say, they were in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, and the wind was contrary. Somebody say contrary winds. Do you know what contrary wind means? Wind trying to blow you the other way. Huh. As I was preparing for this message, I woke up in, at about 1.45 a.m. and the Lord told me to actually put a dimension on, on this message. I didn't do it in the first service for sake of time that I, I didn't prepare for. He said, talk about the demonic side of things. There's something called, even from normal storms, there's something called demonic storms, which is, Every marriage will go through its normal, you know, uh, teasing challenges. It's not anything from your father's house or anything. <laughs> Do you understand? It's that your wife just prefers uh, uh, to, pref to press the toothpaste from this side. It's not a demon, you know. And you, you don't like to put this seat uh, uh, down. 
or whatever. So that one, it, 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 that one is not a demon. That one is part of uh, marriage, and it can break marriage. Now, beyond that one, eh, there are what you call demonic storms. If you read the book of, I will show you, in the book of Job, the Bible says, an east wind came from the wilderness. This is after Satan has asked for Job. <laughs> there are some winds that come from your father's house. And that wind was speci specifically sent to uproot the marriage. When you look at your brother's marriage, it was uprooted. When you look at your father's, it was uprooted. When you look at your grandfather's, it was, it's called a demonic storm. But I prophesy to you that in the mighty name of Jesus, eh, when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Are you here today? Isn't it this? Storms. Ministry. God told you. Say, God told me to start ministry. They will ask you, are you sure? Say yes. How did he tell you? Did you tell you because you saw another man, your friend, in ministry, and you liked his suit, and you liked the way, and you think, oh, ministry is a good way to earn money without working? <laughs> Somebody asked the the the. the <laughs> if I tell you what we suffer, a, 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 a friend, an old friend, saw myself and my wife somewhere. We had our anniversary and we went, you know, we went, I took her out to a hotel this many years ago. And he saw, then he, he told somebody else who told me, he said, what's wrong with Shola? Shola should go out and get a real job and stop living off his wife's dad's money. <laughs> I said, see my life. <laughs> because I carried my wife out to hotel. So I... <laughs> You've now surmised my own. If you know my wife's dad well, he doesn't give she she to anybody for anything. He's, he's a proud, prudent man. He hasn't even given us my wedding present yet. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> so now, can you imagine that insult? He can't reduce it. He said, he said, I should go and get a real job. So what I'm doing is not a real job. Okay, so I just said to say that, you know. But, but the, 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 the point is, when you hear things like that, you know, it will, it will challenge. Then, more so, when in the early days of ministry, you know, things were really tough. And I remember I was invited to minister somewhere. And, you know, um, my wife now told us, ah, we have some bills. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the bills, you know, and me, a man of faith. I said, don't worry, the Lord will sort us out. Meanwhile, in my mind, you know, there's faith and there's faith. I calculated that this weekend I've been invited to two places to preach. And the first place, they lined me up Friday to Sunday to preach five times. So I calculated the last place I went to. If you calculate it, you know, 200 pounds, I said, I said, the Lord has, it's, it's the first love ministry, never calculate. First love ministry, do not count your eggs before they hatch, because they will break. <laughs> those, those who enter ministry because of money, I say it is foolishness. When people say, Yo, they are stealing money. I say, it's only an insane person that will leave medicine to enter ministry to be stealing money. Do you know, when I go and see doctors, you know, you know I'm getting old, older. I'm sure, I don't think you've noticed. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, when, when you get older, you go and do some checkup, MOT and all. And, you know, when, when, when you go private, when the doctors give me my bill, it's a reminder sometimes that maybe I should go back, you know. When they are charging you 700 pounds, 1,000 pounds for consultation, I said, look, medicine is more lucrative than ministry. Long story short, after we finished ministry, I just noticed the people just came to the car and they stood outside and so were waiting. Ah. Hello. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Ah, ah. The customary thing is that you will see an envelope. No envelope. 
So I looked at his hand. I didn't see anything. So I said, okay, okay. I just noticed they put a basket in the, in the booth. I said, it's all right. <laughs> so we, they, we now drove. After we drove, bye-bye, bye-bye. I waited until the car was out. So I told the driver, please wait. I went to the booth, opened the booth. When I checked the basket, apple, grapes, cookies, chocolate. Then I looked at the back, five alive. No, she, she. <laughs> Uh, it is at those kind of points that <laughs> your faith will be tested. That did you hear God or did you hear you? That's when, that, that's when it became clear that, you know, that, uh, listen to this, we serve God and we die here. <laughs> listen to this, these days, when I even go to minister, I forget, ask my wife, even if after they've given me an envelope, I forget the envelope in the jacket. It's when they are doing dry cleaning. That is how much my mind is off the thing now. God will test you. Are you here? Are you sure you're here? Listen to this. This is why, listen to this. Some of us need to sing some songs. Have you ever sung this song where you say, you know, you are God alone. From before time began, you, you are, are on your throne, you are God alone. And right now, and, and right, right now, now, in the good times and bad, you, you are on your throne, you are on the throne, you are God alone, unchangeable, unchangeable. Unshakable, unstoppable, unstoppable. That's, that's who you are. Listen to this. You know what? That song, many of us sing it because we love the melody. Can you sing that song when you paid a check and it bounced? You are God alone. From before. Before time began. Which means, listen to this, your money failing does not change God being God. Can you sing that song when you expected somebody to live and they died? Does it change? Does it change? You are God alone. In the good times and what? In the bad times. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that some people died in faith. Sadly, the kind of faith we preach today is the faith that is dependent on if it produces money. Or it produces, you say, uh, you don't have a wife yet. That's church you are going to, it's not working. No, try this one here. Try this one here. Bros, sis. <laughs> the fact that she is not married yet or that she does not have a child yet and she's still standing shows she's in faith. Am I talking to somebody too? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That the guy is still in that business shows that he's still in faith. Listen, the number two point is the giants in the land. Who are the giants? The giants are the things that will come to mock you. They, they are situations that, you, you know, that will mock, you know, that you are here, you too. You too. People are talking about planting church. You too, you came here to start church. If you know what we fought in Houston, Oh, it's another story. I, I raked for them. Break to nine. I said, you people, you are not serious. I'm not coming back here. It's because of what I, I, I faced. Yeah. Giants will tell you, what are you doing here? I've gone to nations to do break to nine. I said, you too, you want to come and be moving us. I mean, for sake of time, I mean, I'll tell, you know, so I, I trained as a medical doctor. So while I was a medical student, I, even I knew when I gave my life to Jesus, I didn't read my books. Again, like as, you, as I used to. For about a year or two, I was reading my Bible, but I didn't want to do medicine again. But I had to see, still sit exams. So I told the Lord, I said, please, help me pass this exam so I don't disgrace you. The Lord said, would you like to be operated on by a doctor who didn't read? And I just passed him. I said, no. But I said, but I'm not going to practice medicine. <laughs> so, so we had a deal that, he would just pass me. 
Okay, so anyway, long story short, God told me I will pass the exam. So I heard it clearly. And then I go on the word round. Okay, and while I'm on the word round, I just stand and word rounds, the, your, your consultants will ask you questions and stuff like that. So the guy, the consultant asked the question, it was a general question. And now all of a sudden, maybe there were like 25 or so of us in the, in, on the round. He just pointed, say you, behind there, answer that question. I was about to answer it, I actually knew the question. I confess. <laughs> I didn't know the whole book, but I knew that one. <laughs> and before I answered the question, he said, he didn't even wait for me to answer. He said, you, you will fail this exam. Say you, you, you will you use that, you will fail this exam. You don't know any. <laughs> I didn't even know he knew me. So listen to this. I know it was demonically inspired. Now, when I left the place, eh, if... Instead of standing, how many feet tall? I was maybe four feet tall. Now I was flat on the ground. I went back to my, to my um, uh, room. And I, all I could do is just take my, what they call that, duvet, and cover my head. Shall I, you failed, you failed, you failed, you are finished, you are useless, you are this, you are this, you are that. And then all of a sudden, it hit me that this is how Goliath spoke to David. Say, giants, they, they speak fear. David rise up and speak faith. So you know what? Instead of going into my medical books, which was about three to five days away, that's where I should have gone to. I went into, I picked up that word of God. It says, this book of the Lord shall not depart from, you will meditate in it day and night. I was using it to build up my faith. And you know what? I went to that exam. Guess what? I passed it. I got 50. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why, why are you laughing? <laughs> I passed. <laughs> God defied Goliath. The reason why God gave me 50 is that you didn't read. This is what they call let my people go. Just be going. <laughs> now, the interesting thing in, in it all is, eh? come 10 years later, hmm? I become a pastor in England. Guess who I find at one of our meetings? Eh? As one of the people who are his boss, that, that guy had become a pastor. I was now his boss. Number three, are we still on? Number three is, uh, are you here? The opposition of sinners. What is the opposition of sinners? Listen to this. If you are going to walk in faith, you are going to face people, apart from giants speaking, you know, you're going to face people who are satanically raised up and demonically inspired to resist you. The Bible says in Luke 22, 3, it says, and Satan entered Judas. Are you here? Satan entered Judas, which means there are some people Satan will enter. I'm not saying they are Satan, Okay. And if you look at it, you, you look at scripture, you, there are Haman, you remember Haman, who will be sent to try and, and destroy. There are people that, they, 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 now the point, the Bible says, our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Which means your focus should not be on your mother-in-law. <laughs> you, know, you know, God bless mother-in-laws, but you know, people tend to blame everything on their mother. They say, the mother, she's a witch. I'm like... What's all this? Everyone there is a witch. How, how can that be? No, you know, but the truth of the matter is that, you, you, you know, Satan will raise people. We see that with Nehemiah, with, uh, what, do, what do they call it, Tobiah and Sambalat. We see that with Herodias. People who, listen to this, have you ever heard of the, the boss from hell? No, not every boss is from hell. Some of it is just your bad behavior. You're always late, and then you are saying it's the boss from hell. God actually sent that boss to help you. Hallelujah. But the point I'm trying to say is that there are some people who, who the enemy raises to actually try to scuttle your faith. It's persecution. But listen to this. Resist them. Number four, and this is the last attack point, is fiery that. Somebody say fiery that. What are fiery that? Is the attacks, demonic attacks from the enemy. Listen to this. If you, the scripture is real. 
It says in Ephesians 6, 16, above all, somebody say above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to do what? Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. What are fiery darts? Essentially, darts with fire. <laughs> so they are not just arrows. They are arrows with what? Fire. And what are these arrows with fire? There are some, there are some arrows the devil will shoot at you. I mean, the other day we had a, a, a breakthrough night. And, you know, I saw an arrow shot at somebody. And the, the person wasn't even in the service. The Lord opened my eyes and said, you know, there's this person. I mentioned the name of the, uh, the, the birth date of the person. And then I said, I saw an attack on that person's health. It was later on, the person was at, wasn't at the service. The person told, came and told me, said she had just been diagnosed, I think, a month prior that she had cancer of the breast. And what I saw was that an arrow had been shot. Now, how many of you know that most people will run around and say, uh, uh, uh. What, does, what does the Bible say we should do? Please, can I have my whatever? You know, the Bible says when you hear a thing like that, it says, take your shield of faith. It doesn't say, run to your pastor. <laughs> it doesn't say, take the pastor's shield. It says, your what? Shield of faith. Which also, when you have a dream, something comes to you in the night and says, we will destroy, we will kill you. Your child will whatever. Listen to this. What does it say? Take your what? My question is, do you have a shield? With which you will use to quench the fiery darts of the evil one. Listen to this. I, I mean, I don't have a lot of time. I'll tell you a few things. I mean, a number of years ago, <laughs> one of my parishioners' father called me from Nigeria and said, he was very calm. He said, Pastor Shola, early in the morning, he said, uh, they say the doctors are saying that your daughter has gone mad. Eh? Me, I don't have a daughter. I have only two sons. <laughs> and then he said, he said, his daughter is calling my daughter. He says, uh, he says, well, I know that your Lord is able. He says, she's in so so she's in the house now, blah, blah, blah. I say, so he left it with me. When, by the time a father is calling his daughter your daughter, you will know uh -huh, you have work. So you know what? He said she'd lost her mind. Mm -hmm. Nobody could communicate with her. Now, when people come to give me bad news, like somebody's in the hospital, I don't rush them. You know where I went to? I went to the bathroom. And I opened up the water for a soak. Ah, Pastor, somebody has gone mad. No, I went to my place where God speaks to me. And I was in the bathroom and I was praying. And then while I was in the bathroom, I heard a word from God. I said, go now. She'll be healed. Do you know, I jumped out of the bathroom almost without cleaning myself because I didn't want to lose that word. And I went there. And this lady was, when I got in, I'd already sent my assistant pastor in advance. He had gone there. When, by the time we got there, I saw him outside. <laughs> <laughs> he had first of all come, he said he prayed and nothing happened. So he said, what should he do? Should he call the ambulance? <laughs> I said, don't call anybody. So I just noticed he was outside speaking the dog, Shakata Father, <laughs> which is okay. Yeah? So I got inside, and when I got in, I saw the girl, and she was just, uh, I called her name. Let's say her name is Betty. I said, Betty. She did like this. I said, Betty. She did like this. And then I then I said, Do you know me? She didn't know who I was. So I just I said, Well, the Lord said, You right now the condition is saying you have lost your mind. But my conviction is saying that you will gain your mind back. So what did we do? I stood based on my conviction. I I actually shut my eyes. Now don't do try this at home. If somebody is insane, don't shut your eyes. <laughs> Keep one eye open if you will shut anything. <laughs> you know, I shut my eyes. Why? Because I did not want to look at the boisterous wind. 
if I saw her doing like this, or this is why I don't rush to the hospital when they say somebody is ill, because you will bring me to your level. I'll be looking at what you are looking at. It may take me two or three days. It took Jesus about four days to respond to, to Lazarus. Why? He didn't want to be brought to their level. You want me to rush there. You, you, so my question is, do you want pastoral care or do you want healing? Ooh. So listen to this. I was ready for that thing. My shield was ready. And so when she was doing highlight, I just said, Father, Lord, we thank you. In the good times and bad, you are on the throne. You are on the throne. You are on the throne. How about us? Unchangeable. Unshakable. Unstoppable. That's who you are. I was focusing on who God was. You know what? I said, she just said, Pastor, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, what am I doing here? That means your senses are back. Take your shield of faith. An arrow was shot at that girl's mind. But God used me. I'm not the, do you understand? At that point in time, to stop it. Yeah. What has been shot against you? And what are you saying? Let's stand up and pray. Let us stand up as we pray. Just realized I preached with a hundred dollars in my hand. Through <laughs> people watching it will be wondering what I'm <laughs> I want you to open your mouth right now. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what you're going through right now. <laughs> open your mouth and begin to pray. I've just been in front of that. You know, I, there are three points that, you know, but I will, just, I will just list them for you. I talk about how to nurture your faith. One, f how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. You need to put or position yourself in a place where you can hear his word. Number two, how does faith go? Faith goes by looking at your condition or the situations. Is this making sense? When Peter looked at the storms, that was when he, he was sinking. But when he looked at Jesus, he walked on water. Number three, how does faith grow? Faith grows little by little. Yeah? So don't believe God for, to heal you of leukemia. Don't wait till leukemia comes. Build your faith by, by believing him for healing headache first. Little by little. And at the end of this, your faith account will grow. If you've been through any challenge, listen to this, and you've come out of it, that is God boosting your faith account. Oh, if you've been through anything that almost killed you, but you survived it, that's God building your faith credit. I want you to open your mouth right now. I don't know what you're going through. Just begin to thank God for allowing that thing come because God is using it to grow your faith. Open your mouth and begin to pray. That child that looks like has gone errand, that, that situation, that marriage that it is a, to build up your faith. That long-standing situation is to build up your faith. Open your mouth and begin to, be, begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him in advance. Oh, do not consider it man about a strange. When you go through any trial, God is improving the value of your currency, of your faith. He's improving it. He's improving it. Man terikara. Rosoto parante. Open your mouth and pray. Thank him. Thank him. I appreciate Jesus. I appreciate him. I appreciate him. Oh, skite para. If you're here today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, this is your time to do so. You're saying, Pastor, pray with me. Pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my... Listen to this. If you don't... If you're not giving your life to Jesus, you're at risk. You are on your own. You are, you are at risk. You are vulnerable. And so... Listen to this. I don't know. You might have given your life before, but you've gone back on that decision. And this is your time to rededicate your life. If you want to do that, there's some people on the sides or in the, in the center of the hour, uh, you know, with cards. Just slip up your hand. Somebody will put a card. Say, I want to give. I don't know if that, for certain that if I die today, I'm going to heaven. I need to make that assurance sure. Put up your hand. Somebody will slip a card into your hand and, and, and so that you can make that decision. Or the other thing is, if, if you prefer the digital method, there is a QR code you can scan. Just do that very quickly, and, you know, somebody will reach out to you to pray for you, you, have, um, you know, in the next uh, day or two. And by the grace of God, you know, your faith will be established. Father Lord, we just thank you for what it is you are doing in our lives. Help us, help us so that our faith will not fail us. Strengthen our faith. 
When we go through what we go through, help us to go through it and come out on the other side. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Were you blessed? Okay. Bring out your offering very quickly. Hallelujah. Um, the Bible talks about us. We have a responsibility before God. It's not, you know, people say, all oh, these church people, how else will we pay the bills of the church? You know, <laughs> they, if you notice that um, in uh, um, London, electricity does not take faith. They take cash. <laughs> so we need your faith converted to cash so we can pay the bills in it. And it's also, it's, also it, it's, it's, a, it's a responsibility we have that if we are blessed, that we should give in return to, you know, to God. Now, God doesn't spend cash, but his church does to advance the kingdom. So, and you're not doing the church favors. You are doing yourself a favor by honoring God. So bring out your offering. Okay, you're not compelled to give, especially if you're worshiping with us for the first time. Yeah, this is your day off if you don't want to give, you know, but, uh, or you just gave your life to Jesus. We're more concerned about you giving your life than giving your money. All right, so let's bring out our offering. There are various means and methods of giving. There's also a digital method. You can scan the QR code, and then there are various banks and whatever. Just read the instructions, and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Thank you so much, Pastor, for that word in season. So can someone just turn to their neighbor and tell them, don't let the enemy steal your faith. Thank you so much, Pastor. So a few things to run through very quickly now. Um, how many of you are aware that we have the supernatural shift coming up this week? You don't sound excited. Can we just shout? Praise God. So it's supernatural shift 5.0. It's the fifth edition of our flagship um, supernatural conference that runs from Thursday up until Sunday. And um, um, doors open at um, 5.30 p.m. on Thursday. So if you've registered, please uh, make sure you arrive on time so that we can, you know, have an um, orderly start uh, to the event. And now I know tickets are currently sold out. So please, by all means, join us online. We'll be streaming live. You know, go on to our YouTube channel, TLC, the Liberty Church online on YouTube, and you can follow us as we um, run through. And if you've registered and you know you're not coming, please kindly release that seat, release that ticket. We've got loads of people waiting um, to jump on this one. Um, so we've got the Lagos Prophetic Service happening next Sunday. Um, in Lagos, we have a live worship and prophetic ministrations happening uh, by Pastor Shola. Uh, Eventbrite registrations are open. So we'll kindly encourage your family and friends in Lagos to attend um, that um, service next Sunday. And... Um, 90 days of altar fire. So, come on, people. <laughs> right. So, at the Liberty Church, we believe in prayer, and we have the various initiatives to help you build an altar. So, uh, we've got the 90-day fire prayer going on at the minute from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. every day. Now, look, if you don't have the time to do your normal routine, just plug in 30-minute slots every 30 minutes between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m., plug in online to connect with like-minded people and, and you can pray uh, with us on Zoom and expect extraordinary results. Amen. So after the service today, we've got a serve fair going on. Now, serve is our volunteer um, program. So we have all the various teams out in the foyer. There'll be representatives there to talk to you about what it means to join a team in the church. You're looking to serve in God's house. You know, they are there to answer your questions and put you through the pace to becoming a member of the um, work, workforce. And building God's house update. So at the Liberty Church, we're believing God for three properties across our locations. So um, people are already giving. And if you want to be a part of that, there is a QR code on your screen at the minute, please. You can scan that to um, give as the Lord leads you towards us uh, purchasing properties for our locations. And um, so far, we've raised 1.25 million pounds. Thank you so much for your generous giving. Praise God. And in the last week, we raised 3,000 pounds. You know, so the objective remains 
those three properties. So be a part of that. Let us build our Father's house uh, together. And um, very quickly, um, so PB has got a new book. <laughs> Hallelujah. Becoming a Woman of Prayer. You know, so um, awesome time yesterday here uh, when PB launched that book. So at the end of the service, PB will be out in the foyer signing the book. So I encourage you all to, you know, seize the opportunity. I'm sure PB has words ready to, you know, to give to you as she signs that book. So kindly make time to, um, to get that done. And lastly, um, can I just ask that uh, the slides and the promos for um, Supernatural Shift is please. Thank you. God bless. The Lord calls this house the house of prophets. What is the gate? The gate is the place that restricts the access of evil and allows the access of good. Anything trying to traffic illegally in your life, tonight I restrain access for, into your family and I decree and declare that your house or your life is a holy district. Many times we talk about Jesus as Lord, not because we are affiliated with him as Lord, but because his title is Lord. And you need to know where you stand. Do I call him Lord because that is who he is, or I call him Lord because actually I have submitted to him as my Lord. When you see someone growing in the spirit, know that it contends with so many things. This encounter is designed to open your ear in the spirit so that you can hear the things of God. A servant is someone who is willing to accept whatever is given to him. A prophet is someone who speaks on behalf of God. Occupy till I come. This gospel must be preached in all the earth. Oh my God, I see a gate open in the spirit. Wow, this week is going to be bloody for the devil. It is serious. There are some serious, you know, firebrand people. These, these are people who have, you know, shifted things in their various spheres. I mean, one of the people, the last person that came out was Pastor Satish Kumar. Some of you know the story, but I, I won't tell you. But he pastors, um, well, they call it the third largest church in the world. And before he actually started that church, we were, all right, thank God for good wives. <laughs> Before, they, they keep you looking good. Before he started, they, before he started the church, we, he was an evangelist and we sponsored him for about two, three years. Sending, yeah, more than that, a number of years, probably close to five years, just giving a certain amount a, a month. And one day he just flew back from India. I said, Pastor Shola, please stop that money. I said, why? He said, God has helped us. And at the time, there were about 50,000 members. Now there are 330,000 members and God sent him back 17 years later to come and encourage my own faith. So this is going to be a powerful, I don't know about you, <laughs> but it's going to be a time to remember. It's going to be action-packed. I don't know, I think um, uh, they, they say that it's fully booked now, but we're trying to, this week, we believe spaces will be, will be made available. So keep your eyes open and move fast, hallelujah. But this is one event you don't want to miss. If you're in London, make sure you are physically present. It doesn't matter whether you're in ministry or not. It will help your business. It will shift things in your life to the right place. We've come to the end of the service. And today we have a bumper harvest. Yeah, so we have a lot of baby dedications. Now, how many of you know that's an answer to prayer? Let me also say something in advance. Sometimes you have, always have the odd person who gets offended at a baby dedication. We've had emails and letters sent to us that, oh, they didn't spend enough time on their baby or whatever it is. See, I think they had about six babies uh, or something to that. One, two, three, four, uh, uh, plus five, a, a five-year-old dedication and a number of birthdays. Unless you want to stay here till four o'clock. So we'll just believe that a service doesn't have to last for eternity to have eternal value. 
please don't send me any email. I will return it to sender. God bless you. <laughs> please just appreciate what it is we do. If you want a longer service, you know, we can have one way for somebody to organize a longer whatever for you somewhere. But on Sunday service, people have lunch to go to. God bless you. So if you are dedicating your child, the babies of the gaffers, uh, they're ready. The they, um, babies of uh, white cheese, get ready. God bless you. Okay. The babies of the adephilas, get ready. Babies of the shore. Olushino and Kemi have a second. I didn't know. Okay. Woo. Second time around. Hallelujah. Amen. And then baby de dedication of Ogun Beso, Onyilola Victoria. Get ready. And then we have the birthday celebration, 10th birthday of the Ogun Sonwo Victoria. They, uh, and then Buki Dania is celebrating a, a, a milestone birthday. <laughs> Donyi Olala Day is also celebrating a milestone uh, birthday. And then Fumilayo and... Is it Fumilayo Tayo Adiraji? Uh, is it the same? Well, somebody is celebrating their 60th. We'll confirm when they come here. 60th birthday. Hallelujah. And in this church, please, we rejoice with those who rejoice. And I know some of us have places to go to, but I'm praying that somebody will stay behind and celebrate with you soon. Okay. And for those of us who we are celebrating with, can you please really show that you are thankful to God? Hello. My people back there, please, if you don't dance, I will not pray for you. <laughs> Hello, my people. Today I saw you dancing at your wedding. Today you have to dance that kind. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's begin to thank God. Let's rejoice with those who read. Let's stand up. Hallelujah.
Amen. And now that's what our song will continually be in the name of Jesus. So we're going to try and do this as quickly, but as efficiently and effectively as possible. So division of labor. Pastor Bims will do the baby, the dedication for the babies. And then I will take the birthdays. And then I'll pray for everybody afterwards. Is that okay? Hallelujah. So Pastor Bims. Praise the Lord. So we're going to, uh, as Pastor said, the prayers don't have to be long to be effective. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all of these gifts. The Bible says that each child is a reward from God and an arrow in the hands of the parents. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for these rewards. We thank you for these gifts. We thank you for these arrows. We soak each and every one of these children in the blood of Jesus. We preserve them in you. We keep them in you. We decree, we declare no evil arrow will find them in the name of Jesus. Concerning every developmental milestone, they will hit it in the name of Jesus. We forbid delay of any kind concerning them in the name of Jesus. They will be excellent children, teachable. They will listen to their parents' instructions. They will know and fear the Lord even from their youth. In their generation, they will be outstanding in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for, for baby Eriore Ofeolua. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which means I am the evidence of God's favor. Indeed, Lord, let this child demonstrate and manifest you in her generation in Jesus' name. We thank you for Ogene Siro, which means I am written on God's palms. Indeed, this child will know your favor and help in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for Emeka. Uh, we thank you for Joel, which means Yahweh is God. And we thank you for Chukwe Emeka, which means God has done so much. Indeed, in this child's life, you will do exceedingly, abundantly, far above the expectation in Jesus' name. We thank you for Lua Darasimi, which means God is good to me. Indeed, this one will know your goodness and favor in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Noel, Noeli, which means it means Christmas joy. Indeed, this child will bring joy in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for Olua Fi, fi, kayom, fi, fi kayom, in which God has added to my joy. We decree and declare their household will be full of joy because of this child. This child will not bring sorrow in Jesus' name. We thank you for Jeremiah, which means the Lord exalts. Because of this child, exaltation will come to this household in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit each and every one of these children back into your hands. Even as you have given them to the parents, continue to be the custodian, the preserver, and the keeper of all that pertains to them. We decree and declare every time we hear of one of these children, it will be good news. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a five-year-old. Okay. She seems to be shy. Father Lord, we thank you for five years of preservation. We thank you for five years of grace. Even as your hand has been upon her to preserve her and keep her thus far, you will continue to watch over her in the name of Jesus. As she has celebrated five, she will celebrate 15, 25, 50, 75 in Jesus' name, in health and strength and wealth, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, I take over from here, and we're celebrating the 30th birthday of Buki Dania. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. And don't you Olala Deweshe. And Adiraji, oh, okay, hello, how you doing? All right, 60, well, you don't look it. Uh, amen, that's why I was looking somewhere else. I'm like, where? Well, <laughs> all right, I was looking for 60, and I didn't find 60, but uh, I believe what you say. Amen. Okay, can you please step forward, the young ladies, please? Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you for this milestone age. Uh, celebration of these uh, individuals. We thank you for how far you brought them. We thank you that many were born in the same year, but they are not around today. Um, many, you know, were 
in school with them. They're not here today. And we thank you, Father Lord, that they've survived many storms. They've survived many storms. And, and they are here standing, giving glory to your name. We pray that they would not just survive, but they will succeed many decades and, and celebrate from many decades to come. Thank you, Father Lord, Lord, that whatever the enemy meant for evil, you will turn it around for good. That these ones will continue to be a reference for, point through their lives. Their lives will be a testimony. Through their faith, they will obtain good reports. I decree and declare that uh, from their life, great and good things will come out. Lord, blessed is, is, is the fruit of their hands. Blessed is the fruit of their lips. Blessed is the fruit of their womb. In due season, Father Lord, at the right time, they will, they, you know, you will give them the right spouse and they will, have, they will give back to valiant children who will subdue kingdoms. Lord, we thank you that the generations of the upright will call them blessed. Their seed will be mighty in the earth. I decree and declare that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has he entered into the hearts of, of uh, men those things which he has prepared for those who love them, love him. Father Lord, I pray by your spirit that you will do over and above and beyond what they could ever imagine. I'm praying, Father Lord, by your spirit that they will not, the same way Pastor Bims prayed about the children, that they will not be late in their developmental uh, uh, um, milestones. They will not be late in terms of what God has in store for them. We banish delay concerning their lives. As they celebrate this milestone, we decree and declare supernatural acceleration. What should have taken so many years, let it happen in months. Thank you, Father Lord, that these ones will be celebrated and not tolerated. These ones will become distinguished and not be extinguished. Thank you, Father Lord, that not too long from now, we will hear good news on different fronts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a powerful hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, I think we're done, isn't it? Huh? Sorry. Oh, they didn't put it there. Oh, okay. Tire, where is it? Oh, is it 10? Ah, in f oh, familiar tire. Where's familiar? How come you're behind there? You have to take it by force. Okay, ah. Please, next time, just come forward and just stand there. If you are holding, that's your faith, your ticket. And 10th birthday. 10th birthday. How come? Oh, wow, so sorry. Okay, so we, Father Lord, we thank you for your hand upon Fumilayo. And we, and we thank you for uh, uh, Victoria. And Lord, as they celebrate their birthdays, and she also is celebrate, thanking you for preservation and good health. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that in the name of Jesus, that they will have many more decades to celebrate Amen. in good health, Amen. in godly wealth, Amen. with good testimonies. Amen. Lord, we pray that by your spirit, that all that will be said concerning them will be liftings, risings. Amen. When others are saying that there is a casting down, they will say there is a lifting up. Amen. Their story will be different. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord, that you will crown all their efforts with blessings. Let, they, let, let their testimonies be resounding Amen. to the glory of your name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay, apparently it's their fifth, is it fifth wedding? Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I still remember when we were dancing in France, didn't it? Wow. No, uh, today you have to do that dance that you did. Let me spare you. Amen. He said, please. Uh, now that you've gone to business school, you don't want to now rejoice. <laughs> don't worry, I'll spare you for today. Another day will bring you. Wow, amazing. You know, it shows we are growing older. Five years and two babies afterwards. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we thank you for their wedding anniversary. We remember the day. We remember the wedding plans. We remember the various celebrations. Now we are in the marriage. <laughs> we thank you, Father Lord, because the, the marriage is not the wedding. Mm, uh, and we thank you that indeed 
that this, this marriage, the wine will get sweeter. Amen. Uh, we, we, we know that the wine is better with age. And so, Father Lord, we pray that this will be their story. Amen. It will be vintage wine. Carabados. It will, it, will, it will be such that, Lord, their, 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 their marriage will be a testimony. Uh, that their marriage will be a reference point. Amen. Lord, help them with the evening times. Amen. Uh, with the middle of the sea. Amen. And when the storms come raging, you will fortify them. Amen. That they will not just survive the storms, they will succeed. We, we pray blessings over their home. We pray blessings over their children. We pray, pray blessings over all that they lay their hands to do. And we decree and declare that we will come back to celebrate not just five, but 50 years. Yeah. Not too long from now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Amen. And then, hallelujah. Can, can I pray for those of us who stayed behind? Uh, we deserve prayer, ain't it? Father, Lord, we thank you because your word says to rejoice with those who rejoice. Lord, some of us had places to go to, but we stayed behind. And we, we sowed a seed of time. Lord, the same way we have sown a seed in these people's lives, let us receive a harvest. Amen. And we decree and declare that not too long from now, anybody that has any expectation and, and it feels like it has been cut short, let these people's testimony be a, 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 a reference of faith. Let it be an advertisement for us that indeed God can do the impossible. Not too long from now, somebody who has been diagnosed with a terminal disease will come back and celebrate a milestone. Yeah. Somebody here who has been diagnosed has not been able to have children will come here and celebrate dedication. Yeah. Somebody here who thought their marriage was over will come here and celebrate many decades of marriage. And Lord, somebody here who looks like they are financially despondent, too, not too long from now will celebrate a turnaround in their finances, in their businesses. Lord, strengthen each one of us faith. As we step out of this place, let us step into victory in every area of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I've been told to tell you, please, just for a minute, if you can just sit down for a minute, if it's okay, and we'll, dis we'll, you'll, 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 we'll disperse you in a, in a minute or so. Very quickly, please. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We just wanted to do a few closing announcements before uh, we round off service. We know time has been well spent, fast spent, but well spent. Thank you for bearing with us. Just a few reminders as we begin to round up service. Um, in the foyer, we have a help desk. If you would like to find out any information about the church or you have any suggestions, about how service can be better, please be sure to visit the help desk um, to make your suggestions or request information. Uh, we'd also love you to follow uh, TLC on Instagram, either my page, or could we please just have a moment's quiet? We're almost done. Thank you so much. Um, if you could please follow myself, Pastor Shola, and TLC on Instagram. It's a great way to be updated about what um, is going on in church. It's um, one of our key um, forms of communication. So please, if you're here for the first time, we'd love you to follow TLC online. Also, after each service, we have a prayer line. If you're believing God for something, you'd like somebody to agree with you, maybe concerning a job, a home, or healing, anything, please uh, come to the front of the, the auditorium at the end of the service, and our ordained leaders will be here to pray with you and, and join faith. We always have very, very powerful testimonies. Also, if you're here for the second time, we have a gift for you. If you want to make your way to the back of the foyer, um, you will be given your, your, free, um, your free book. Um, last but not least, we always re re request that our, uh, you please um, 
uh, keep noise as much as possible to the minimum as we transition out into the public spaces, the car park, and on the streets because we live on a, in a resident, we, yes, we live, we're situated in a residential area and we want to make sure that we continue to be on good terms with our neighbors. Last but not least, um, I'd like to welcome our first time as we know that on a special day like this, we have lots of people who are at TLC for the very first time and we want to celebrate you and appreciate you and tell you a little bit about TLC. Currently, TLC meets at four locations. So apart from the Liberty Point that we're situated in here, we also have a East London location in Canary Wharf, a North London location in St. John's Wood and Croydon. If you don't belong to a Bible-believing church, we'd love to see you again at any of those locations. We meet at 10 a.m. and 12 noon every single Sunday at any of those four locations. We're also online at noon every Sunday. And we believe that as you uh, continue to drink from this stream of ministry, God will bless you and elevate you. Uh, last but not least, we want to host you if you're here for the first time. We have some refreshments for you. We have a gift bag. And Pastor would love to meet and pray for you. So if you're a first timer, would you wave at me? God bless you. Please, if you want to grab your bag, whatever it is you came with, um, these beautiful ladies waving at you would love to direct you into the reception area. Uh, can you please just move out into the aisle with everything you came with? Yes, let's make them feel welcome as they transition into the reception. God bless you. Please, let's keep clapping for them. I know there are some first-timers that are still seated, um, you know, but we would really love to host you. Pastor will be along shortly after service to pray with you. God bless you as you do so. For those of us that are remaining, please let's rise up as just we close out service. Father, we just thank you for this awesome time. Uh, we thank you for the sure word and the strong word that has come forth today. Uh, and we know that the seed of faith that has been sown in the hearts of your people will bear fruit even unto eternity in the name of Jesus. If you were here during first service, would you just lift up your hands quickly? We just love a count, a quick count. The ushers want to take a picture of you with your hands raised so we can eliminate you from the count for second service. God bless you. Thank you so much. Please give your neighbor a high five and say, it's been wonderful sitting next to you. Have a great week. God bless you.